Hi everyone, in today's video I thought I'd show you how to make this wine bottle bag. Now this can obviously, it has two purposes, so the, the first purpose obviously is to put a bottle of wine or like a bottle of champagne, this one will fit actually because this is wider, and present it, you know, rather than just giving a bottle. But obviously because it's made out of fabric, then the person that you give the wine gift to in this bag can then reuse it. So I'm going to, I've done this cream calico one and I've contrasted this with a black ribbon and black decoration. But the one I'm going to show you how to make today is in black, but it's the same principle. It's a nearly the same size, but I've just made this black one a little bit narrower and then you can choose which one you want to use this one as I say will fit like a champagne bottle as well as a you know as well as a, a bottle of wine it's roomier this one I'm making a bit narrower so it's got a gusseted bottom um, you know and it's got the ribbon thread through and it's got the handles so there are a few processes in this one there's buttonholes and then obviously there's the heat transfer vinyl decoration now this one says congratulations the one I'm making today is going to say happy birthday. So I'll just explain. So first of all, for the handles, you need two pieces that are 12 and a, 12 and a half by two and a half inches wide. Let me just move that off so you might be able to see it better. So 12 and a half by two and a half. Now this one, I cut all the edges with pinking shears and then when I sewed the straight seam on the inside, I zigzagged the seam as well. This one, I'm using my overlocker, but the principle is exactly the same. So when you sew your side seams, if you've not got an overlocker, then just do a zigzag or use pinking shears. It's entirely up to you. So like I say, for the handles, you need two pieces that are 12 and a half by two and a half. I've overlocked both the short edges. And then what you're going to do, you're going to fold it in half and press it, open it up and fold the sides into the middle and then fold up. And you're going to then be left with a piece that's 12 and a half by three quarters of an inch. OK, so that's going to form your two straps for the actual body, the bag. You need a piece that's 31 and a half inches long. Obviously, I can't get it all in. And in this particular instance, this is seven and a half wide, but the calico one was nine. So this one should fit just a regular bottle of wine. You may get a bottle of like Prosecco or something in it. I'm not sure. I'll try it at the end, but it's entirely up to you. So what I've done with this one, I've just overlocked the two long edges because again on the short edge what I'm going to do I'm going to fold in half an inch and fold in half an inch on the top and the bottom so the the making of it is exactly the same it's just that you've got two different widths that's all but the length and the handles and everything else are the same so the first thing I'm going to do is take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a straight stitch all the way down both long edges to seal up the handles. Now I'm going to leave my white thread in for this because I think you'll see it better on the video but I'm going to be using white heat transfer vinyl on this anyway so hopefully it will just make a nice contrast and I'm just as, as I say I'm going to sew about an eighth of an inch away from either of the long sides using a basic straight stitch. So that's one side done. I'm going to turn it round and do exactly the same on the other side. So that's how it's looking now. I'm just going to do the other one. OK, so I'm just going to cut off the threads. And for this one, I'm going to put the handles on the inside of the bag. On the other one, I stitched them to the outside. So again, you can choose. So for the next bit, I'm going to put buttonholes in here and here on both ends so that when you fold this up that's where you've got a place to put your ribbon through and the way I did this and I did it the same on the calico bag and on this bag I found the middle of the width so on the other one the other one was nine so I, I came in four and a half this one I've come in three with the seam folded like this how your finished edge is going to be I came in three and three quarter inches and then it came down three inches and marked across 
and then from the center of that cross I went across to the right one and a half and across to the left one and a half and made a mark and that's going to be where my buttonhole is going to start now if you don't want to put the buttonholes in don't put them in just tie a piece of ribbon round at the end but I just thought it made it look that little extra bit special so again I'm going to keep my white thread in I'm going to put my buttonhole foot on I've already got my button in the back of it and I just chose a, a, a button I think it's three quarters of an inch wide so that's going to give me a three quarters of an inch high buttonhole but it, it again it doesn't matter it's for ribbon you can make it half an inch or something like that you could even punch a hole with something like a crocodile and put a grommet or a you know a rivet or something in but I'm doing it with a buttonhole because obviously I've got a sewing machine and I might as well do it so I'm just looking for that pink mark and on your buttonhole foot you've got lines on the horizontal and you've got lines on the vertical the vertical is your center line you're probably not going to be able to see this but if you've got a buttonhole foot as far as I'm aware they're all the same so that's your center line and then these lines here is the center of where I mark that line so I'm just going to bring the little catch down on the bottom of the buttonhole. I'm going to choose the buttonhole on my, my, on my machine. I'm just choosing a narrow, regular, rectangle buttonhole. And I'm going to set this off and let it do its thing. So that's one buttonhole. So now I'm just going to come and find the other one. So that's the two buttonholes done in that end and then again you can see I've not done anything with this top yet but you do all your measuring from the folded edge okay when you're marking your positioning so now I'm going to do exactly the same find my center find my horizontal and line this all up okay so that's done I can take that out I can take the buttonhole foot off because it's finished with and put my regular foot back on and go back to a regular straight stitch so now i'm going to attach the handles and i say i'm going to attach the handles on the inside i'm going to position them down about a half an inch so that the bottom of the handle is at the bottom of where i've turned it under and again i've already measured so I've got the middle positioning because that's what I started with to do the buttonholes and then with this one I went out two inches to the right and two inches to the left and made a mark and that's where I'm going to put the handle and then I'm going to bring the handle around like so and then attach it on the inside so you can pin or clip this if you want it's entirely up to you I'm just going to get a couple of clips for now where my mark is here and I can feel where the bottom of the seam is so I'm just going to put a couple of clips on that for now just to hold it in place while I turn it over and then what I'm going to do I'm going to sew again two lines of straight, sti straight stitch to hold this hem down but that will also hold the handle in place so now I can see where it is it obviously helps if you thread your needle so now I can see where it is I'm going to put the foot down and I'm going to start sewing and that will sew this handle and then when I get to this point here I'm going to attach the other handle so I'm just going to put a clip here to remind me that I need to attach the other half of the handle in a few minutes and because you're lining the handle up with the bottom of the fold you're going to catch it twice so you're going to catch it when you come along doing your top stitch here and you're going to catch it when you do your top stitch along the bottom now 
Now I'm going to stop the machine. I'm going to bring the handle around without twisting it and I'm going to put this one in place like so and carry on sewing. So that's what we've got so far. So now when I do my second row of stitching, that will catch the handle at the bottom and it will just give extra stability to that. I'll, I'll show you the calico one at the end to show you how I did the other one. I did it slightly different. Okay, so that's how it's looking now. Obviously, I can tidy up all the threads in a few minutes. So now I'm going to bring the, up, the bottom up so that the right sides are facing and line up the top edges. And I'm going to bring in my other handle and put it in place. Again, I can use the marks I've made on the other side. Or I can just, you know, line it up with what I've got here. It's probably easier to do it this way. So I've got the two handles in place and the other end has already been stitched. So I'm just going to do exactly the same. So I'm going to line up the edge of the foot. So all there's a need to do now, because I have already overlocked both long edges I just need to put right sides together and sew down both long sides okay so this is what we've got so far so the back's still right sides together with the wrong side out so now I'm just going to box the corners again you don't have to if you don't want to but I just think it makes it look a little bit better. So I'm going to bring in my one and a half inch template. Now I cut these years ago with my scan and cut and um, the great. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to line the one and a half inch square up to the bottom of my bag. So the folded edge of my bag and to the edge of the stitching, not to the edge of the bag because that won't make it a square, won't make it a box bottom. And then I'm just going to draw around like so. I'm using a pink chalk pencil because I'm using black just to try and make it a little bit easier. On the calico one, not sure whether you'll still be able to see it here or not. I've not taken it off yet, but I use my Scan & Cut water erasable pen to make all the markings on this. So I just need to put a little bit of water on that and the little blue marks will disappear. So now I've got my two squares so that's that's done this is how easy it is to make box corners and to do buttonholes don't be afraid of trying things like this so now i'm going to bring in my pinking shears and i'm just going to cut along that chalk line and cut this square out like so and if you don't know what I mean by a box bottom, that's what this is. It gives it this nice bottom like you get on, you know, bags that you buy in the shop and things like that. Just gives it a nice professional finish. Takes a couple of seconds longer, that's all. Especially if you've got your pre-made templates. So this will give us a three inch box bottom using a one and a half inch square. So all as you do now, you open this up like so. You can see the crease where the bottom of your bag is and you line that up with the side seam. I'm just going to put a couple of clips in it and then you sew straight across. And I like to press my seams for this the same way. So my seams go into my right. So I'm going to do the same. So there's my centre seam of my bottom. I'm going to line it up with my side seam and push my side seam to the right okay so that's what you've got and you're just going to sew straight across doing a, a back stitch at the beginning and the end on both sides and then the bag's done and it's just a case of doing the heat transfer vinyl which i've already cut so that will be the next thing we're going to do in a minute once we've finished this okay so that's that done so now i'm just going to tidy up some of these Threads. As I say, if I was probably making this myself as a gift, 
Um, I'd probably sew it all in black, but it, it, it might look nice as a, as a contrast. Just going to tidy up threads on the buttonholes. I just thought it might be slightly easier for you to see on the video. So let's. So now I'm going to turn it right side out. Put any threads on the outside. This pink chalk will just brush off the front of the bag. And then to push my corners out, I use one of these styluses. I've had it for years. If you follow me, you'll know that I always kind of use this. And I'm just going to push the corners out on that box corner. Just turning my heat press on as well, just to um, let that warm up because obviously I've got the vinyl to press on. So the way I did this was I opened up the seam and then I flattened it out like so. It's not easy with, with black. So you can see this is like your box bottom and then I folded this down and I pressed it and then I put my heat transfer vinyl on and I threaded it with my ribbon. And I've just realised that I've not moved my microphone, so I'm not sure if you heard any of that. So basically, flipped it inside out, folded up the bottom so you can see the box bottom, folded it down, and I'm just going to give that a quick press. And I'm doing a quick press for two reasons. One, to obviously make it look nice. And you have to pre-press your fabric before you put your heat transfer vinyl on anyway. So... I'm just going to bring in my seam ripper and just rip open this buttonhole. So I'm just going to put the point in above the stitching. And you, you know, you don't even have to go right to the end on this. I'm putting my hand inside so I know I'm not going through the bag. And just gently push up. Don't go obviously past the stitching because you'll rip all the stitches. This literally is just for ribbon. So it, it you know, it's not for... A button so that's the two buttonholes done so I'm just going to pop that on one side I'm going to bring in my heat transfer vinyl take my washi tape on that was holding it down I'm going to bring in my weeding tool and I've got a weeding box on this design so I'm just going to start pulling the vinyl away trying to stay in shot so you can see what's going on as I say this one says happy birthday the other one said congratulations but I've still used the little um, glasses on this one as well it's not easy to do this when you've got a camera directly in your way so some of these little circles have got a little bit in the middle that needs moving, removing, and some haven't. So again, I've just got to try and get my head in to see which ones I need to pick up. I'll just look at my other design. So you can see these two here and these two here. So there must be a, a middle in that one. So take those out. These two bigger ones are solid and now it's just a case of picking out any of the middles that need to come up without getting my head in the way. I think I've got it all so I'm just going to scoop all this into the bin so I don't pick up any bits of stray vinyl. Oh no, I can see I've not got a piece there. So now I can peel away the excess vinyl from around the edge because I'd put a weeding box in just to make, make it easier. So now it's a case of just peeling this away. I've got lo lo quite a few rhinestone designs that I've been making recently. So I'm going to have some projects for rhinestones and I've got a couple that combine vinyl, heat transfer vinyl and rhinestones together. So I'm just going to move that mat out of the way, bring my black bag back in and then have a look at this and see. So it looks as though I've got everything. Happy birthday in the wine bottles. So what I did, 
this is where the bottom of your bag is so I don't want to go past there because I don't want any unevenness when I'm pressing it so my happy birthday is going to come up here and then I obviously wanted to avoid the buttonhole so I can bring it a bit further down position that like that that all looks okay so now I'm just going to use my easy press and press it for 15 seconds so my easy press has been warming up I've got a piece of parchment paper that I'm going to put over it you don't really need to with the transfer and press my heat press light pressure you don't really need to with the heat transfer vinyl um, transfer tape on it but I usually like to cover it and just let this count down now again I'm just going to move it over and do another 15 because this isn't wide enough to cover that whole word so now this is a warm peel you have to leave it for about 45 seconds I have got a couple of other videos already on the channel using this this is um, heat transfer vinyl from HTV Romp by the way so I'll link to my vinyl playlist and you'll find the other videos in there so I'm just going to give it a waft just to let it cool down so it's not had the full 45 seconds I am going to press it again so that can go in the bin and then I'm just going to put this back on and I'm just going to go back over it again with the heat just to make sure that that does completely stick because obviously I'm near a, I'm near a seam and I'm going to hit it from the back as well. So as you can see now that's fully adhered, it's not going anywhere so I just need to put the bottle in and thread the ribbon through it. So let me get a bottle, okay? Now I don't drink so I've had to borrow a bottle of somebody for this. So I've borrowed this one that's more like a wine, uh, champagne type Prosecco type bottle. And then I borrowed just a regular bottle of wine, but this is the wider one. So this is why I'm using it. So I'm just gonna find some ribbon. So I've got this kind of lacy ribbon. So I'm gonna feed it through the buttonhole from front to back, come out from the back, back through the back, through the inside of the bag and out the front. As I say, you don't even have to put the buttonholes. You don't even have to put the buttonholes in if you don't want to. You know, the bottle should stay in there as it is, but I just thought it made it look extra nice. So I'm just going to open this up now and slide this bottle in. And then I'm going to tie the lace on the front. I just think that the ribbon or whatever you use will just kind of help your bottle stay in there. So if you're traveling with it, you know, hopefully there's no way that your bottle is going to slide out. I'm just going to lay it down in the hope that you'll see it better. Bring in my fabric scissors and just trim those ends and that's it. So it says happy birthday, it's got the decoration on it. I know I can't get it all in, but I'll try and get some pictures at the end. And this is still roomy to be fair, so seven and a half. You know, if you want to save on a bit of fabric, this one, as I say, was nine, started off as nine inches wide, and then obviously you've got your, your seams taken off. And, you know, the box bottom's exactly the same. This one was seven and a half, and just made exactly the same way and with the same box bottom. So that's my project today using heat transfer vinyl. Again, as I say, there's a link to this in my Amazon favorites here on my website. Um, and it's just a, you know, it's a nice way to gift a bottle of wine if you're giving somebody, you know, if you've not got a lot of money to spend, you know, everyone's looking after the pennies at the moment, aren't they, with what's going on all around the world. So, you know, rather than just turn up with a bottle in your hand, if you've got some fabric, just make a little bag like this. If you've got some, you don't even have to put the vinyl on it, but I just thought the vinyl just kind of took it up a level. And it's a way then that they could re-gift this. So it's kind of like two gifts in one. 
Anyway, that's today's project. I hope you liked it. Please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. And there'll be pictures of both bags in the blog post and in the YouTube thumbnail.